what looked like fog to Carlos, began to look like tiny bubbles that floated around. Then a loud noise jolted his attention, and he realized it was Don Juan telling him to listen, because his voice was his only guide. He commanded him to mount one of the bubbles. Carlos watched the bubbles turn into different shapes and sizes, and when he followed one, he became affixed and rode it until he was that thing which resembled a bubble. Don Juan's shrill metallic voice jolted Carlos again as he commanded him to look at the banks of the water. The sound of the water became terribly loud, and Carlos found himself coming out of the blackness and being splashed by Don Juan in the irrigation ditch. Carlos felt tired, and when he went to rub his eyes, his heavy arm was a dark green color. He looked down and realized it was covered in the green mist. Don Juan yelled for him to get out of the water before it trapped him. Afterward, Don Juan wanted to know everything that took place. Carlos was excited to tell Don Juan about riding the misty bubble, but Don Juan was only interested in what direction he was going. That's why he kept on telling him to look at the side of the water to get a bearing, but Carlos could only guess at directions. Don Juan told him he did a good job learning that a brujo uses the water to move and that he moved so fast that he had a hard time keeping up with him. Carlos asked how far he went, and Don Juan told him he wouldn't believe it if he told him. I think you must be aware by now that everything is mortally dangerous. The water is as deadly as the Guardian. If you don't watch out, the water will trap you. It nearly did that yesterday. But in order to be trapped, a man must be willing. There is your trouble. You're willing to abandon yourself. I didn't know what he was talking about. His attack on me had been so sudden that I was disoriented. I feebly asked him to explain himself. He reluctantly mentioned that he had gone to the water canyon and had seen the spirit of the water hole and had the profound conviction that I had flubbed my chances to see the water. How? I asked, truly baffled. The spirit is a force, and as such, it responds only to strength. You cannot indulge in its presence. When did I indulge? When you became green in the water. I, I didn't indulge. I thought it was a very important moment, and I told you what was happening to me. Who are you to think or decide what is important? You know nothing about the forces you're tapping. The spirit of the waterhole exists out there and could have helped you. In fact, it was helping you until you flubbed it. Now I don't know what will be the outcome of your doings. You have succumbed to the force of the waterhole spirit, and now it can take you any time. Was it wrong to look at myself turning green? You abandoned yourself. You willed to abandon yourself. That was wrong. I have told you this already, and I will repeat it again. You can survive in the world of a brujo only if you're a warrior. A warrior treats everything with respect and does not trample on anything unless he has to. You did not treat the water with respect yesterday. Usually, you behave very well. However, yesterday, you abandoned yourself to your death like a goddamn fool. A warrior does not abandon himself to anything, not even to his death. A warrior is not a willing partner. A warrior is not available. And if he involves himself with something, you can be sure that he is aware of what he's doing. Life for a warrior is an exercise in strategy. But you want to find the meaning of life. A warrior does not care about meanings.